join with General Manager Gary Pratt to provide a bit of an update in the off season. Well, we're in June now, Gary. Uh, it's been a little bit of time since we last spoke and quite a lot's changed. Uh, yeah, just a fair bit. Obviously, when we spoke last time, we said we'd give regular updates. So really happy that we're able to do that. Um, there's been a lot of changes uh, within the playing squad as people have been well documented with some of our media updates and, uh, and articles on the website. There's been some changes uh, in and around the ground and obviously lots of events held as well. So um, coupled that with people trying to take some time off in the off season and it's been, been quite a eventful time, one of the busiest times of the year we have. You talk about events going on around the ground. One of the most recent things that we've held is our summer tournament. Um, do you want to just maybe touch on that and the successes that we've seen with that over the past three weekends? Yeah, I, I, I need to thank a lot of people around the club, um, all the staff. Dave Haynes, our, our photographer, who's been here for all of the, all of the days um, volunteering, uh, giving up his time for our, our catering staff, some volunteer catering staff as well, um, to, to have over 180 teams playing on our pitch over the course of five um, days in June uh, has been a logistical challenge, shall we say, but one that's been really, really, um, really positive. Um, we make no bones that we do go on about the summer tournament. It's one of our key revenue drivers for the, for the season. Uh, it does help along the way, um, but it also provides over, I think, it's, I think it's now over 900 children the opportunity of playing inside the stadium. Um, and, and people are coming back for more each year because of how well the event was been run. And that goes down to, to the work of the staff and everybody coordinating to, to bring this event together. So I thank them all for doing that. And I hope everyone's enjoyed their time. And congratulations, obviously, to the winners of, of the events, including some of our Hawks community youth sides who've gone very long in the, uh, in the knockout stages of certain age groups. Looking as well at what's going on uh, a bit more away from the first team for, for the time being, but somewhat does link into the first team. Um, we've recently announced some some changes um, within our player pathway opportunities that we offer here at Haven to Waterlooville. Um, recent club statements gone out. Do you want to just maybe expand on that and touch on it for those who might have not seen it? Yeah, so we've announced that uh, our under 23 side that ran last season isn't going to run this year. Um, the board spoke at length about the player pathway, what was best. We took some advice, obviously, from our new head coach, Sean North. Um, we took advice from, from various people and, and, and what's the best player pathway. And to be fair, we're not the only club that's taken this decision. There are, have been another, a few other clubs and people within football that know I am quite it's sort of in within the league structures of, of local football. And, and it wasn't an easy decision. However, we do feel as a club that the pathway will be more beneficial starting when people are finishing youth football. So certainly at under 18s level and, and bringing it through. Um, we are holding trials at the end of this month um, for our under 18 side that will play in the under 18s version of the same league. So the Hampshire Combination and Development League. There'll be Sunday, Sunday afternoon matches um, most of them should be held here at Wesley Park as well, which will be after certain women's games here. So it's a, it's a, it's a logistical thing as well. And we are when and truly looking for those future young players from local football and local environments to come through and find that pathway into the first team. Um, there's been a lot of emphasis on making sure that we, we have this pathway and it's just a restructure. It's not getting rid of something because it's not necessarily worked. It's, it's a restructuring to try and um, do it in, the, in a, an age appropriate way. So start with the youngsters and still see if it builds up. And there could be the possibility within the next season or two that the 23s is introduced alongside the 18s. So it's, it, I don't, we don't see it as a step back. We see it as a modification on what the original pathway was. And, and we look to still provide local, local, um, opportunities should we play into the first team i think local opportunities as you've just touched on there is one of the main things that um we've seen a lot of people talking about and that does kind of tie us quite nicely into the first team a lot of people have wanted to see that local talent being brought into the football club people yeah. that know the club and people that care about the club and i think um with what we've seen player signings wise it's fair to say that People have been heard and we've we've got some of that now coming th through the football club. Yeah, I, I touched on the last interview that we do listen. We absolutely listen to what what our, our support base is, is looking for. And we have to be realistic. We're doing what's best for the club. We always have that in, intention at heart. Um, we have 
uh, employed a new head coach who has obviously got a lot of knowledge within the local game, having worked at another club in the PO area for all of those years. Um, it's not been the number one target. The number one target is to find the quality of player that's correct for the level of football we're playing at and to, and to achieve as high a position as physically possible for, for next season. Um, and that would be the same thing for anybody in this league. So it, it's, not a, it's not a new model. It's not a modified model. We're basically looking to go as high as you can. Some people will say we can only win the league. Some people say, well, we must make the playoffs. People will have their own opinions. The board will discuss targets, so to speak. Um, but one thing the board will do is to use all of their efforts to try and make the best squad possible on on the on, on everything that's available in front of them, and and I think we're going a long way towards doing that. Um, I do appreciate some of the concerns at, at the early parts of of June and end of May, where we're releasing player after player, but people were working in the background. Lots happen in a in a place to to see what's going on. Say, for instance, you go to Tesco's. You know there's food there, but how does it get there in the first place? Well, that's similar to the football club. There's stuff going on in the background to produce something for you on a match day, and and, and we hope that will be an entertaining product on a match day, as well as a winning product on a match day as well. So that's that's something we're striving towards. We are still, believe it or not, I'm, I'm talking to you in the middle of the June, we're still very early in the stages of, of we're not starting pre-season yet. So we've got loads of time. The season starts on the 10th of August, but still got nearly two months. There's plenty of time. Looking at some of the, uh, what is now, I believe, seven players that we have signed, there are some, um, some very impressive names in there. I think it must be said for step three. And obviously I'll come back to all of that stuff to do with step three in a, in a moment's time. But um, we've had seven new faces through the door. We've got three who were already under contract um, as per the retained list. And then obviously we've had one player sign a new deal. So while, as you say, the concerns were there, I think it is starting to come together a little bit more now um, with some of the, well, recent signings, not just being that young and hungry model, but also players that have got the experience to, to come in and, and really help this club kick on. Yeah, you, you to, to build... You can't build a perfect squad. You know, there's, uh, people go on about perfection and this and the other. There's no such thing as per perfection. You, you're evolving all the way through time. So you, you're trying to build the best squad stroke team that you can do with what you've got at that time and how can you then develop it to make it even better. Um, some of the signings have been surprising to certain people. Um, some, of the, some of the signings have been Ooh, interesting sort of signings. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I'm, I'm delighted with the work that's gone on in the background. Um, I think, I think the club have worked very hard. The chairman's worked hard. The head coach worked hard. Other board members have worked hard to to ensure that we have got the best, the best platform to to progress. And you know, there's no, I'm not going to name names because once you're in the squad, you're in the squad. So I'm not I'm not too fussed on that. But I think we've got a squad here that's very much going to be challenging the higher ends of the, of the league table. And that could be probably clipped up at the end of the season. All that what he said, this, that, and the other. But the, to be honest, with what's in paper in front of me, that it, it does look very good. It does look very strong. But the club aren't necessarily done there. They're, they're, we're looking at other aspects, and I'm pretty sure there'll be more to come as well. So. Um, yeah, it's a watch this space. Slowly but surely we'll get there. It's no panic stations or anything along those lines. The, we as a board are not worried. We are we are very much in the destiny of our own. We've got the destiny in our hands. We know what we're doing. And and roll on. Roll on pre-season. Roll on 10th of August, the start of the season. Roll on the 26th of April and hopefully with, with some success. So we're really looking forward to the season. Moving kind of a bit more in a first team on the pitch direction, pre-seasons, what's next, pre-seasons, what's com coming first. And um, obviously we've put a lot of things in place already for pre-season. We've got a, a very busy July ahead of us filled with pre-season fixtures, home and away. And of course, um, that Pompey fixture on Friday, the 19th of July, which tickets are all already on sale for now. Yeah, what's been really pleasing is um, we, we've gone... We've gone with what we can as early as we can this season um, for pre-season and for season tickets as well. Um, if I can go to season tickets first, come back to it to, to pre-season. Season ticket sales, I've been really, really pleased with how they're going. 
Uh, we're already well over the 100 stage. We are higher than we were at this point last year, um, which is a real sign of trust from our supporters that they know there's something coming. Um, I can All I can say is that everybody is going to keep striving towards it. We've had some great reactions with people coming into the office who, who have purchased their season tickets and, and how pleasing it is to, to see some of the signings that, like you said, have already happened and some of the re rebuilding that's going on. Um, we do hope that we can we can hit a certain number of season ticket sales um, and, and we think we're well on track to do so. So we're really happy with that. And then obviously that leads on to pre-season. We're going to do pre-season slightly differently this year. We've, we've got more away, more away games as well planned in. Um, we have a trip to Selsey early in July. Um, then obviously Horn Dean we're going to on Saturday the 13th. Um, we then have our big traditional annual game home to Portsmouth. We have got tickets on sale via our website in the ticketing section. They're ten pounds for adults, five pounds for concessions and under sixteens. Really pleased to say that we're well in excess of the um, five hundred tickets sold already, um, which is a lot more than we've had in previous years. So, one thing I would say is suggest is whilst whilst the game is is already out there, don't delay in purchasing your tickets. Last year we had over four thousand inside Wesley Park. Great atmosphere, great day, um, but we don't want anybody disappointed in case in case it gets even better this year. So don't delay in getting those tickets and get them sorted. We also have home friendlies against Farnborough from National League South, who obviously we played in the league last year, and a friendly at home to AFC Wimbledon on the 27th of July. Um, I do hope a lot of people can come to that game because you can buy me a birthday pint. It'll be my 40th birthday, so absolutely make sure you're down there. I'm proud enough to say I don't mind taking a free beer off every supporter. That's absolutely fine. I don't think you'll be walking out of here um, in one piece <laughs> if that is the way. And then um, I think what I'll, I'll kind of detour a touch before going on to, to everything to do with the league. Obviously, the 3rd of August, we've got Fans Day going on here yeah. at Wesley Park. Um, obviously, the first team have an away fixture on that day. But to continue what we're doing in our community, I think Fans Day is uh, such an important part of that and such an important part of us also showing our, our support along with our fans. Yeah, we're, we're really big on the fact that we're trying to integrate everything and involve everyone as much as physically possible. But on this one, I, I have to take a backward step. It's nothing to do with us. Be honest with you, the club will support it like no one's business, and we're right behind it. But these are the fans organising it for the fans' day, and the group of fans that are, are organising this probably don't want me to shout who they are because that's the type of people they are. But they have gone, they have jumped leaps and bounds. They've done massive amount of work to get this day up and running on Saturday, the third of August. More details will come out via the website and social media channels. But if you're not on holiday in the summer holidays and you do want something to do on Saturday, the third of August, and you're not going to watch the team at Biddeford, by all means, come down to Westley Park. There'll be quite a bit of fun going on. There's fun activities. There might be a surprise match going on on the pitch involving supporters and involving other people that have been closely associated with the club over a number of years. So Fans Day is going to be a wonderful occasion um, and more details will come out about that, but save the date, Saturday the 3rd of August. If you're not going to Biddeford, Fans Day is the one to go to. And then Fans Day on the 3rd, just a week later is when we kickstart our league campaign and obviously yep. um, very different to the last time we spoke, um, what must have been start of May, end of April time even. So a uh, good six weeks or so ago, yep. if not more now. We know what league we're in. Yep. We know when fixtures are coming out. Is it starting to feel a bit real yet? Yeah, it's always very real. Um, there's a lot of things going on in the background, such as league AGMs and things like that. We're already well in, well in advance on, the, on that side of things. Um, there was a couple of supporters that were messaging me after privately after the um, after my last interview about what was my preferred option. Southern League was the preferred option, ladies and gentlemen. I can I can vouch for that. Um, we're very happy to become members of the Southern League once again. Well, we're not because we'd rather not have relegation, but we're very happy to be in that one um, because of it, it, it's it's a lot more local matches. And that's that's the, the crux of it. We will have uh, a real vibrant atmosphere here at Wesley Park, which we need our supporters, obviously, game by game to come in and help drum up that atmosphere. Our ground will be a, a cut final to a lot of clubs coming here this season. So we need we need our fan base behind us. And we are actively trying to make that product on the pitch, match the efforts that the supporters always show off at the pitch. But it also means we don't have too many long journeys. Yes, we've got four or five long ones, no problem at all. But we've, I think we worked out 
there was 14 journeys within an hour and a half drive of Westley Park to their actual ground most of them in traffic as well so so we're really happy with 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 the teams that we've got in with us and now we push on on performances on the pitch to, to try and get that so uh, we look forward to the fixtures being released um we have been advised it's likely to be in the week commencing the 15th of july that is a likely date so so the southern league will release more details about that in due course um but we also have the other cup competitions being released such as fa cup draws uh, and the like which will probably won't get the fa cup draw to the end of august once the early extra preliminary rounds and preliminary rounds have been done um but we we look forward to that and obviously fa trophy hampshire senior cup hampshire fa senior cup as well with servio senior men's senior cup as it's now called just talking on cup competitions really quickly and it may be something you might not know quite off the top of your head but obviously going down a division I'm sure there'd be maybe a few points of question for, for entry points because obviously entry points for the club um, will have now changed going down to step three. Um, do you want to maybe just kind of take us through that slight little change? Yeah, I'll do my best. So the FA Cup, we come in around earlier. Uh, we were in the second qualifying round previously when we were in the National League South at step two. Step three comes in at the first qualifying round. I think the dates are around about the middle of the September um, that, that that round takes place. Uh, the FA Trophy, uh, we used to come in uh, second round proper, I believe. Is. I think we come in in one of the qualifying rounds. I'd need to double check that one. Uh, but there's no changes on any of the other cup competitions is, is as, and, as you were. So, um, yes, we do have a a slightly earlier run to get to Wembley on those two competitions but on the positive note it's another round or two of extra prize money once we get to Wembley so yeah, it's, we could just take the rough with this move and of course um, as you're I I exampling there the, the optimism's high around the place there's a lot of things going on as we've touched on the first team um, we've touched a little bit on the community but I'd like to maybe build on that a bit more we've spoken on the summer tournament um, we've obviously not long had um, some very successful half-term holiday courses across Easter break and also um, across May half-term and then we've got summer to look forward to as well and obviously in, in the May holiday break there was um obviously a couple of lucky young young men who were able to come and meet a couple of the new signings yeah we, we we're really doing a lot to try and integrate things we're also working with schools in the local area and, and, and towards the end of june we're going to we're going to a secondary school i can't name them because i don't believe the children are aware of it happening but we're going to do a, a sports fun day for for a secondary school in the local area um yeah, I'm pretty sure they don't know, so I won't say anything. And I know students from that school do watch these interviews, so I'll keep I'll keep quiet on that one. But we do work a lot with with our holiday courses, and being in the summer holidays, they'll be working alongside our first team at preseason training. So if if you want to have uh, if you want to have the experience of your child not playing against, but playing on the same sort of venue as as our first team, then then why not book into our summer holiday courses details will be going out on the website pretty soon um depending on the airing it might be a similar day <laughs> to, to, to be honest we are looking to go live very very soon but there's a lot of things going on and we're going to keep our supporters up to date with, with, with plans along those lines um but well watch your space there's lots happening one thing we have um we have done recently for our our westley is changing their brewery and basically what what that has meant we're going to have a, a change of products on there but we have managed to lower the membership prices in in there based on uh, agreements that we've made in place a lot of the work's been done by mark pope one of our directors and and in conjunction with chairman as well um and their work uh, you, you'll see some rebranding around the ground so if you if once you're once you're coming back to the ground for the start of the season, it might look a little bit different as you enter the ground via the West League car park. So I won't give too much away, um, but there are some changes of foot a plan from from outside um, and we're also um, exploring further opportunities for catering facilities within the ground as well. So um, we are we are working towards working on these things that have been pointed out to us by by our supporters we, we do try to cater wherever possible um sometimes it's just not feasible we would love it for the people that were asking for a dome to be put over the pitch so they never get wet that's something that's not going to happen but but we are we are actively looking to make this the best venue the, the real hub of the local area um and the best venue it could possibly be and and obviously with the facilities we've already got we're on the way
Uh, lots of things still going on. Thank you very much for your time, Gary, and we look forward to um, having having an exit down um, probably towards the start, if not during the start of pre-season, um, as the excitement continues to build towards 24-25. Thank you, Josh. Cheers. Take care.